Good morning. If you all please rise and join us for our entry entrance song. Glory and praise to our God.
for the repose of the soul of Janet Cairo, Asensio Bijaro, Mary Coupier, Pedro Calvert Ibarra, Thomas Malone, Patricia Salinas, Carlos Rodriguez. Also, on this very day, I'm celebrating 13 years as a priest. 13 years as a priest. I also pray for the repose of the soul of Father Ademar Lino, who was my classmate. Was a, we were then together on this very day, and he was called by the Lord last year, was affected by COVID-19, and he didn't survive. So I pray also for the repose of the soul on this holy mass. Let us pray. Holy Father, who by no merit of my own chose me for communion with the eternal priesthood of your Christ and for the ministry of your church, grant that I may be an ardent yet gentle preacher of the gospel and a faithful steward of your mysteries. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who is with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the captain and the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. The Sanhedrin ordered the apostles to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and dismiss them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they've been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. The word of the Lord.
fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore, full of 153 <coughs> large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus had Simon Peter, Simon, son of John. Do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him at the third time, Son, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that Jesus had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted, but when you grow old, you will stretch your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he said when he had said this, he said to him, Follow me. The gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, there is a movie that I watched some years ago when I was a child in the 80s during the time of Holy Week. The movie was made in the United States and was released in 1951 with the great actors and actresses of Hollywood on that time. And it was a technique, technique, color, a kind of color movie, but it wasn't that way. Something like that. In the name of the movie, it had the title Kuo Varis, K U O space Varis, V A D I S, that is in English translation means Where Will You Go? It's based on the novel of 1896, written by a Polish writer named Henrik Sienkiewicz. And this part of the movie is during this situation, during the time of the uh, conflict between the Roman Empire and Christianity, between 64 and 68 um, BC, and after Jesus, I mean. And, and when Nero put fire in the seat of Rome and blamed the Christians, there is a scene of this movie when Peter is fleeing the seat of Rome out of fear and he is with a young Christian named Nazarius. They were going to Greece, probably in Ephesus. And Nazarius asked Peter, some of the words are in a very old English, the Victorian English, so I'm going to call some of the words. And when Peter and Nazarius were leaving the seat of Rome, Nazarius asked Peter, Peter, what is going on? 
What is true of you? Peter answered Nazarius, I don't know. My mind is heavier than my body. If the Lord was here, I would ask him, what should I do? And then they stopped on the way and looked on the horizon. And Peter said, look, how beautiful scene on the streets. It's like the Lord wants to talk to me. And he had a, a vision of a bright light. And Peter knelt and asked, Oh Lord, what should I do? My heart is so weary. Kuo Vadis Domine. Where do you go, Lord? And then Nazarius in ecstasy of that vision. In that moment, Jesus spoke to Peter through Nazarius. And Jesus said to him, My people of Rome have a need of thee. And Peter asked, What did you say? My people of Rome have a need of thee. If thou desert my people of Rome, I shall come to Rome to be crucified a second time. Then Nazarius, out of the, his ecstasy, and Peter asked him, what did you say? I don't know. I didn't say anything, Nazarius said. And Peter realized, oh, it was the Lord. Oh, Lord, he spoke to me. Let us go, Nazarius. Let us return to the city of Rome. And then, you know, Peter suffered the martyrdom being crucified upside down on the year 68 after Christ. Why I'm given the example of the, this movie of 1951, Quo Vadis? Because of the questions that Jesus did to Peter on today's gospel. Do you love me? When we read the gospel, we think that Jesus questioned Peter three times because Peter denied Jesus three times before Jesus' crucifixion. But if we think only in this way, our reflection of the gospel will be very limited. It means we have to go deeper into the reflection. Jesus asked Peter three times if Peter loved him because Jesus wanted to reaffirm Peter's fidelity to the gospel. Peter said that it's the gospel to lead the disciples, to lead the community of Christians, helping them to be faithful to the gospel, helping them to be faithful to God. To love the Lord, as Jesus asked, is not the same love as we see on some uh, soap operas on TV. It's different love because the love grounded in God, is a law rooted in God, a law that is said and is presented to us in the scriptures. A law that means, the consequence of this law means to suffer persecution, to be misunderstood by many, to be misunderstood and be understood as a crazy person who is following someone who is following God and is trying to be faithful to the Word of God. Of course, Peter and the other disciples, they were frustrated. They were sad, they were upset of what had, of what had happened with the Lord Jesus. They saw Him risen, but they decided to go up to the Lake of Tiberias. John's John's gospel didn't say where, but they went up to the, to the north, around Capernaum, Nazareth, and Cana in Galilee, where the Lake Tiberias is placed, where the Lake Tiberias is, is, is present. And they want to return to the older way of life, means to be again fishermen. And Jesus is with them one, once more. Jesus asked, if they had caught something. 
And Jesus said to them, throw your net on the right side of the boat. Sometimes, or most of the times, we, we're like the disciples of today's gospel. We are newly baptized as neophytes, just did the first Holy Communion, did our confirmation, are just married, are serving the church in many capacities and different ministries, and sometimes we feel weary and we want to withdraw ourselves from the Lord. We want to withdraw ourselves from the fidelity of the gospel to return to our older way of life. And Jesus is going to say to us, in the same way he said to Peter and the disciples of today's gospel, throw your net, not on the left side, but throw your net on the right side of your boat. That are going to catch fish. That, are going, that we're going to renew your fidelity to the gospel. You are going to renew your fidelity to God. This is how Jesus uses this moment during this time of the Easter season to call our attention. It, it, as he called the attention of Peter, he constantly, very often, he calls our attention to pay attention on the details of life, to pay attention on the details present, present in the gospel. In the, in the details present in our ministry, in the way that we serve God and we serve the church. Helping us to be a better husband, helping us to be a better wife, helping us to be a better professional, helping us to be a better Christian, a better member of the community, helping us to be a better priest, a better out of service. Because our focus must be the Lord. Our focus must be to follow the Lord Jesus along the way and to be faithful of what he said and thought that is present in the scriptures. When we are aware of this, when we are really aware of this, we can understand, really understand why Jesus asked Peter three times if Peter loved him. And why so many times Jesus asks us if we love Him. And so our answer must be an answer that comes from within us, from, from within our hearts. As a profession of faith, as a profession of faith, that we not only love Him, but we trust Him and we want to be faithful to Him. Second point of the homily, as I said in the beginning, today I celebrate 13 years of priestly ordination. And this day is still so vivid in my time. Of course, at that time I was only 34 years old. I have no gray hair, no gray beard. I was skinny, not well nourished as I am now. <laughs> No one can say to us, oh, you are so fat. No, I'm well, I am well loved <laughs> and well nourished. It's true. And the meaning, when I think about priesthood, I, I, it comes always to my heart, the words of St. Saint John, Saint John Paul II, when he was Archbishop of Krakow in Poland. Priest means to give life to others. This is the meaning of priesthood. I have not children, I have no biological children, I have no children of my own blood, but I, I, I have, in these 13 years as a priest, I have given life to children in different ways. I celebrated the sacraments as listening confessions as anointing those who are going to see the Lord face to face, as advising, as calling attention, even when sometimes I am upset with some originalness. Give life. Give life. 
give a spiritual nourishment. To those who come to me, to ask a moment, a minute, to have someone to listen. This is the meaning of priesthood. Second is, we need to pray for our priests. We need more priests. I'm not going to be younger. I'm only 47, very soon 50s, and go on. We need more priests to serve the church, to serve the community, to celebrate the Mass, to celebrate the sacraments, to be one among God's people. I left my home, my country, my family. I left my own language. And when I came to the United States of America, I only knew five words in English. The three first words, please help me, and the last two words, thank you. <laughs> but not only to learn the language, but to learn the culture of these people in the southern part of the United States, that is very different if I was in Illinois, or Washington State, or California, or Virginia. Different places where I served. In Lafayette, Louisiana, with almost 100% Catholics, and then South Texas in Houston, and then Florida, with 0.5% of Catholics, and now the northern part of Texas, Fort Worth. So I went to serve many places to see and meet different people. But we need more praise. We have to pray hard for vocations, to have good and holy and holy and dedicated priests to the church. Um, despise situations of scandal, despise uh, situations of pandemic, we need priests. That one day when it comes my time for retirement, and I return to my country in Brazil, and someone called me, Father, sorry, I don't speak English. Padre, lo siento, no hablo espanol. <laughs> but knowing that I did my part in God's kingdom, and all those who, who answer the call are following the footsteps of the Lord. So it means I have to I always ask a praise. You are many to pray for me. I am the only one to pray for you. So I need that to pray for me that may God give me health of body, mind, spirit, and soul. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God.
seriousness, with confidence, let us present to God our praise. That the Lord's power will renew the church in the joy of Christ's resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, pray. That the Lord's peace will rescue nations and peoples from hatred and violence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, pray. That the Lord's gifts of living waters and fertile soil will sustain the human family, let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, pray. That the Lord's victory over evil will fill our hearts with thanksgiving and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, God, yes. praise. That the Lord's peace will fill the hearts of all survivors of abuse, young and old. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, God, yes. praise. That the Lord's salvation will give everlasting joy to those who have died. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, praise. For all the intentions that we hold in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, praise. Lord, our God, as we heard the gospel, help us to be faithful disciples of your Son, the risen Lord Jesus. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory song is Worthy as the Lamb. The moment of collection is going to be like the hope, what was before the pandemic, that the artists are going to pass with the back.
and with your spirit, with up your thoughts, we live them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times we claim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to love you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends, loves, and ever pleads our cause before you. He is a sacrificial victim who dies no more. The Lamb wants his land to live forever. Therefore, overcome with gospel joy, every land, every people exalt us in your praise, and even the heavenly powers, with angelic hosts, sing together. They are leading him of your glory as they are faith. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, all of you, and drink from me. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Welcome them into the life. 
mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I give, my peace I give, looking all the down sins, but to the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us all be children. Our first communion song is Remembrance. Yeah. 
Good morning, everyone. My name is Michael Hall. I'm with Stroke Scan. Uh, I would like to make a brief announcement about the upcoming ultrasound screening that we have here, and it will take place uh, here on uh, May 7th, Saturday, May 7th. The screening will consist of seven ultrasound exams. The first is a carotid color flow Doppler. We use an ultrasound machine to look inside the carotid arteries, uh, basically both sides of the neck, checking for any fatty plaque or blockages. This is our stroke test. We also offer an abdominal aortic aneurysm screening. Say that three times fast. <laughs> Aneurysms, unlike stroke, do not present any symptoms whatsoever. And at that point, it also carries a high fatality rate. We will also scan several vital organs, starting with the thyroid. Please pay special attention to these screenings. We find a lot of thyroid disease in this part of the state, as you probably already know. Now, in addition, we also scan the liver, the gallbladder, and both kidneys. Very simply put, we're simply looking for anything that is not supposed to be there or does not belong there. Of course, any type of nodules, uh, masses, or any tumors that may exist on any of these. Now, the reason we offer this the way we do is that these seven exams alone generally average anywhere from five to six thousand dollars in the local hospitals. Due to this high cost, most in health insurance providers do not order these and do not provide that. So, uh, that is a bit ridiculous when it comes to heart attack, stroke, and especially with aneurysm. These symptoms that the insurance companies want to see first are not there or are they, not in, they are not apparent until the disease is already advanced. Now, we will offer these screenings to the entire community and it's very important you know you do not need any insurance of any kind whatsoever to take advantage and benefit of this. Finally, if you are not sure whether this pertains to you, please simply use these as a quick guideline. If you are a smoker, if you are overweight, if you as I do have family history, heart attack, or high blood pressure, if you're battling high cholesterol, or if you have a, a family history of diabetes, please uh, check and consider these ultrasounds for any early warnings and possible detection of serious disease. Now, if you would like to participate, uh, me and Amy have a table set up back there, and all we need is your name and phone number, and someone will call you later in the week uh, to provide you with more information, and if you'd like schedule. I want to thank you so much. I want to thank you, Father, so very much. Your church is wonderful here. You, you are wonderful folks, and thank you for having me. Thank you so much. I believe after Mass, we have a kind of refreshments in commemoration of my anniversary. Uh, it's not war, it's sugar free. <laughs> if I thank you, Father, but I am in diet. Today is Sunday, the day of the Lord, so you can have your sweet today. It's not a problem. And then the kitchen is open, they are going to sell in Ritos, that's good. Very delicious, I already tasted. And everything is for the benefit of our church community. On a reminder, on Thursday, May 5th, uh, Wednesday, May 4th, and Thursday, May 5th, there will be no celebration of the Mass here. The priests of the diocese with Bishop Paulson are going to be in assembly on these two days, May 4th and May 5th. So no celebration of the Mass here at St. Paul. And as I quoted in the bulletin, I said at the beginning, also I'm offering the Mass in memory of Father Adelman Lino, who was my classmate and was called by the Lord last year as a victim of COVID. May his soul and the soul of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray.
The Lord be with you. And, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go to the peace of Christ. Our recessional today is Send Your Glory Down.